following the other precedents, I thought I will ask uh, my co-panelists to give up to 10 minutes presentation on their respective institutions, and we're going to go down in this order. So starting with Ole about design. Dorian, uh, thank you so much for your um, kickstart of hopefully uh, um, um, an interesting debate uh, from different angles about how to build a better museum in Asia. Um, before I, I uh, share uh, some recent steps we did in Shenzhen, um, I'm director of um, Design Society Shenzhen. I would like to thank um, uh, the organizers for this wonderful event. I think to finish with this um, topic uh, actually opens the door for new chapters for the conversation, uh, which I think is very good, because indeed it's a very open-ended discourse. Um, the discourse about what exactly uh, we can do to build better museums, and um, clearly uh, we can do many different things. And it's not either this way or that way. It's not the competition, but it's actually more, let's say, the complementary approach that uh, will make the museum landscape or the cultural institution landscape in Asia and in China and in Hong Kong uh, more impressive. Um, but clearly, with the introductory words by uh, Dorian, um, there is something really impressive in the making here in, in um, Hong Kong. And uh, have been, I've been following the, the progress of uh, M plus for a few years now, uh, already from uh, the perspective of the Netherlands, where I'm from, uh, as director of the Netherlands Architecture Institute. Uh, and now uh, so nearby, uh, only one hour away, um, across the bay, uh, Shenzhen Bay, uh, uh, while building a kind of museum in Shenzhen. But it's not exactly a museum. Uh, it's also not exactly a museum plus. It's something different. And I would like to share some pictures about this difference, I guess. And meanwhile, uh, taking obviously also the opportunity to, um, to invite you to this place uh, because we are going to open in uh, less than two weeks from now. It's today, Saturday. So uh, exactly two weeks, December 2nd, uh, you are all invited to, to join the first public day of uh, um, Design Society in Chinese, Shiji Hulian. Um, so here we have the city of design, Shenzhen. Obviously, design society is dedicated to design, but design as in the, in the broadest sense of the word. Uh, so Shenzhen as a city of design actually is indeed catering that very broad sense of design. Uh, for instance, uh, as a city of makers, not just a city of designers, not just a city to cultivate the discipline of design. Actually, many people in Shenzhen say um, all Shenzheners are designers. It's an arrival city. Uh, of course, there are some people in Shenzhen that are born there, but most people are, um, uh, are uh, um, let's say, newcomers. They call themselves Shenzheners, but they are clearly uh, coming from somewhere else. They are new uh, citizens. And to get on your feet, to establish a practice, to start a career, uh, to raise a family, uh, to interact with fellow citizens, uh, you need to design yourself. And that is a kind of spirit rather than, or a kind of attitude or a kind of mentality rather than um, a set of skills or being trained in a discipline of design. So there is a kind of background, a mental background in Shenzhen, I think, that makes it kind of different, a peculiar city of design, although the concept city of design is very uh, strongly rooted in the UNESCO concept of cities of design. Uh, so how can I uh, move forward? This one? <laughs> this one? Yeah. Um, so although the topic uh, this afternoon is how to build a better museum, um, we are not a museum, uh, explicitly not. Maybe some people remember that uh, two years ago, we used to call ourselves the Sheko Design Museum. Uh, that was like a working, working name for, for this institution. But we decided uh, while um, developing the very uh, strategy 
uh, to drop that name and to take up a new one, which is a noun, it is a society, but it's also a verb. It's to design society. And um, this double meaning also comes back in the Chinese, Shi Ji Hulian. So um, it is um, a design connector. Uh, we do want to provide a platform to foster, to cultivate, to, um, to, to speed up connections in the disciplines of design, the disciplines the, in the plural. But we also would like to make sure that this institution helps to design society in many different ways and to position design actually as a vehicle or as an instrument or a medium to build society. And while doing that to prove the point of design. So it's not only about displaying or showing or debating design, it's also about testing and ultimately maybe proving design by um, adopting a complementary role beyond the cultural activities which is commercial activities. So that's the second point. So there is a, in the name, in the rhetoric, there is an, an alternative model uh, beyond the, let's say, the more traditional model of museum. And that is the way we operate. Actually, uh, Design Society is in itself an operator. Our uh, home base is called the Sea World Culture Art Center. That's the building. Design Society operates that, manages it, programs it. So um, Design Society has not been founded by its initiator, its founder, China Merchants, um, well known also here in Hong Kong, as a cultural institution, but actually as a content operator uh, to run a place that is more static. So very, by its very nature, it is a dynamic model to produce program for the future, which hopefully will be the guarantee, the, 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 um, the safeguard, so to speak, against a place that is only about the object, only about the display, only about the building. It should be a place that is vibrant, um, that is um, all about creating connections between people and their ideas. This is this building. SeaWorld Culture Art Center, operated by Design Society, designed by the Japanese architect Fumihiko Maki, who will also uh, uh, come to Shenzhen in two weeks, uh, despite his, his uh, 89 years old uh, age. He will uh, be there, uh, I think, because this building is a kind of culmination of his um, long, multi-year career to position architecture as a civic medium. And um, although you cannot see it so clearly yet on, on these pictures, which are, let's say, um, uh, anticipations of the life that uh, will be the proof of the pudding. But uh, where is the um, pointer? Here. As you can see, there, the building is here. Maybe you can see it here. The building is like a podium to rectangular boxes merging towards each other, creating a kind of wedge in between, um, which is the diagonal that is completely uh, open access. Um, basically taking one third of the 70,000 square meters of this building. Uh, but not only that, it's also here you can go up on this side and go down on that side or vice versa to occupy the rooftop as another civic place. So although it is a culture art center, and although it's run by design society as a platform and as an institution, it's also a piece of the city that can be occupied by any person who like to, to uh, appreciate the architecture, the park, and especially the fantastic views uh, towards the sea, uh, connecting this building with uh, the Pearl River Delta in the most visible way. But also through this, uh, through this other periscopic volume, connecting the building to the skyline of Shenzhen, so connecting Design Society to the city, and this 
periscopic volume opening a view to the mountain, the Nanshan mountain, and creating kind of connection with more timeless myths of mainland China. So the building, in a way, is a connector, literally by the, the function it performs as a, a civic space and as a cultural place, but also as a piece of architecture and a piece of landscape. It is a connector to connect many different qualities of the geography of Pearl River Delta. And uh, as you can see from the building, you can even see Hong Kong. So hopefully it can, can, becomes also a metaphor of many collaborations that uh, can be cultivated through, um, through this very uh, celebration of the horizon, horizon vice versa, and, uh, and, and become a instrument or maybe a medium to play a part in the cultural uh, mutual understanding between uh, uh, different systems. That said, just a few final words about the inaugural exhibitions. Uh, we will have two large opening exhibitions. Uh, one uh, provided by our founding partner, Victoria and Albert Museum from London, uh, with an exhibition curated by Brendan Cormier uh, titled Values of Design and one uh, about the digital revolution and how design actually is a, a, maybe the key medium to, um, to make sure that the, the digital revolution is not only about technology, that it includes human imagination. So these two exhibitions, um, exploring value in design and exploring human imagination in technology are the messages that we would like to send right from the start as representing uh, the agenda of design society to uh, make people think about the role design can play in society, and by doing so, also build society itself. Finally, going back to the name uh, Design Society, I, I, I will not go too much into detail about all the background thinking of uh, Design Society. We just finish with uh, a direct reference to uh, the second part of our um, brand name, Design Society, is one. And the other one is this grid, this dynamic grid that has been designed by Bruce Mao Design from, um, from Toronto, uh, referring to the Hanze, Hanze grid um, as the space in which every Chinese young kid starts to express her or himself uh, at the age of five or six. So uh, in a way, it could be seen as the starting point of uh, thinking about what you have to say to the world around you. And we take that uh, very um, almost atavistic, almost very archaic metaphorical image as the starting point of our proposition to provide this platform for creation. And by doing so, helping people to see themselves not only about, let's say, um, numbers or citizens or individuals taking up a function in society, but actually as makers and creators of society. So it's not only about us claiming to create society or create or, or design society, but it's re really also a matter of um, uh, cultivating agency and to have others being inspired to take it up themselves. So there is, an, um, there is a vista destination, as they say in, uh, in, in cultural management. You can go to Shenzhen, to Sheikho soon to enjoy, but there is certainly also an agenda uh, to pursue through Design Society to reach out to communities and reach out to uh, creative people, uh, not only the, uh, the core members of the design community, but many people to start seeing themselves as creators and become active citizens in the meantime. So that's uh, the dual meaning of Design Society, and uh, you're very welcome to join. Fantastic. Thank you. Now, uh, OK. Um, thanks for the invitation to introduce a very uh, loneliness museum in northwest of China. Uh, <laughs> yes, because. Uh, uh, People always ask me, where is in Chuan? It's not in Korea. It's uh, uh, in uh -huh. northwest of uh, China and uh, surrounded by all the deserts. And uh, uh, when I was invited to that museum, uh, the, so the 
sponsor tell me it's a very beautiful space and uh, 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 surrounded by organic fi uh, rice field. So I went there and uh, from the first brick, so we can, can we see the, uh, uh, yeah, okay. So I must stand, sorry, because I, I, I don't know how to, Okay, so when I got the topic, how to build a museum in Asia, I think that uh, because I already to be uh, several uh, different uh, museums directed in China, so I think that it's a, a challenge for me to build a museum northwest of China. If you've been there, you would know uh, all the local people there, they never see any professional museum before, even all the stuffs in our museum now. So uh, this one, this one, no, okay. Uh, this is the the photo of spring. So it's a it's a real one. It's not the pee pee one. So uh, <laughs> people never believe that, and uh, it uh, looks uh, quite uh, beautiful. And I want to talk about the. Uh, uh, how to build that, I think. So share my experience with everybody. And this, uh, uh, it's a, a clear definition of the museum. And the, the, I think the, when I was the director of Today Art Museum, I think that I own the power to introduce Today Art Museum. But when I was, when I am the artistic director of uh, Mocha in Chuan, I feel another different attractive of age culture, because there are almost no any professional artists in Inchuan. And there is no audience, and there is no market, and there is no collectors. So how could we make that? And uh, I think the, uh, I made uh, the different uh, definition of this museum. According to the historical and geography reason, we said that this museum uh, to collect and exhibit it the Chinese and the Islamic contemporary arts. So that's why we got uh, uh, several, uh, uh, this kind of uh, report from Guardian, from the art newspaper in London, first page, say Chinese finally opened their arms to the world. So I'm very uh, surprised of that. I think it's a, a smart definition for this museum. And this is the summer, so no air pollution, no clear uh, nuclear bond. So please uh, uh, consider to immigrate to Inchuan. <laughs> and this is the summer, and uh, I think the uh, I want to say that the clear strategy of this museum, the internationalization of a pub, pub, <laughs> publicity and uh, exhibitions. Because uh, um, we got no any local masters in in Chuan, and the, no one knows this uh, uh, Fang Li Jun, Yue Ming Jun, or Zhang Xiaoguang. Even they are my good friends, and they always complain to me, "Why don't you invite us to your museum?" I think this is kind some kind of a uh, policy of a uh, desire, and uh, I don't want to invite any local master to our museum. And every time when they see this photo, they think, oh, gorgeous. But they never see the, the reality of this museum. I always invite international people to there. Even it's really hard to organize exhibition in Inchuan, increase more, almost uh, uh, more than 40% of uh, budget compared with uh, Beijing, because we must buy everything in Taobao. So when I'm if I meet uh, uh, my Yun, I will say thank you so much. Because if there is no Taobao, there will, they won't be have the international exhibition in Inchuan. For I think that if uh, we have this museum earlier, and that's impossible, even all the team, professional team, we must move from Beijing. So we increase a um, huge budget on that. So that's why quite different especially when we organize a Biennale and all the people, artists, they need the very special things. We, we have a, a very special uh, project. Uh, I want to, that, 
uh, project uh, extend for at least uh, four years. I call it Made in China, because uh, everybody thinks the Made in China is uh, the sec second quality compared to other things. But I invite different artists to use uh, Chinese material to set up a huge installation work in our exhibition hall. So uh, it's a quite a interesting uh, project. In the beginning, I can't find a proper person because no one wants to come to Inchuan to do this kind of uh, a huge work. So in the beginning, because I'm Taiwanese, so easy for me to invite the Taiwanese artists to there. And after that, getting famous, everybody, especially the artists, think that we take the documentary for each artist, for each exhibition. So everybody wants to have an exhibition here. So like getting more famous, and uh, especially this one, this one, each piece got one tone. And we hold these uh, uh, works for two weeks. I really hate that. So after that, I don't want to have this kind of huge exhibition there, uh, even it's uh, uh, gorgeous. And this one, it's a uh, uh, salty land. It's Mao Tongqiang moved the, all the salty soil into our museum and, uh, uh, you know, cover whole whole room and uh, get it this way. And we met, also made a, a archive and the video for all the things. It's quite gorgeous. And after that, I always use this documentary and video to invite artists getting more easier. And this is Alton. Uh, last month, we took this picture in, in Chuan. Yeah. I think the, the third thing is it should link with uh, local earth. Before I do a different uh, exhibition in Beijing, I think it's uh, easy things. And uh, we got uh, more than 100,000 artists in Beijing. But in Inchuan, how can we, I do that? I always invite uh, local people to work with us. So in the uh, opening, I invite 1,000 families to create the dar. Uh, the parents bring their children to to make this one. Oh, sorry. To make this one. So everybody uh, make their own darts because I believe every children got their own dart. It's a, a beautiful life, especially to cooperate with your mother or father. And that there will be a good memory in your heart. So we have uh, this kind of uh, 1,000 dollars and in-store in our uh, education room. They are all mirrors, so it looks uh, you know, silent and silent. And the children go crazy when they get into the education room. After that, I always uh, have this kind of uh, public education program with different uh, families. And recently, I set up another uh, project, uh, Memory of uh, uh, Boxes. And we invite the uh, 300 family to create a box and put their own things and the uh, older photos and uh, one paper inside to to memorize uh, what they never forget. And uh, when I saw some of them and uh, every stuff in my museum, they cry because uh, there are some secrets in the boxes. And there will be uh, gorgeous things to see 300 boxes in the museum and belong to the earth, belong to the local people, not belong to the artists. So this is the another uh, public education system. We, ask, uh, we uh, send love to, to your people, to what you love. And it's uh, the postcard and paint. So we invite from kindergarten to college student to paint and hang in there. So all the students go crazy. They really, really want to go to into the museum. And this is what the box I just uh, mentioned that. And that it's a uh, uh, one story and all the small installation in the box. You know, because every citizen, they went to our museum and then everybody say they took the question mark and everybody say, I don't know what's going on with this museum. 
I can't understand at all because we always show the contemporary art show there. But I think it's good things because I don't like people think, oh, it's gorgeous, it's beautiful. I want to like, bring the question mark back home and keep in mind. So that will, you know, wake up people up to think about that. And this is autumn, the last autumn. Oh, no, sorry, it's winter. The last winter, yeah, in Yingchuan. Uh, it's uh, gorgeous, but it's one day. And I think the finally things, uh, starting from the heart, the, the moral education, instead of a profit, uh, I'm sorry to say that uh, what I fear uh, is uh, difficult in China. I live in Beijing for 16 years old, 16 years, and I think it's, uh, uh, it's, it's really hard to bring the new stuff in the museum. And uh, in Inchuan, I try to teach them different things. This all my stuff in the museum now, and there are no any professional one, except two of them and came back from United States and the uh, UK recently. And all of them, they are local people and they never see the museums before. But we try to educate them to be professional. So it's a uh, tough. So I like, become uh, angry and uh, very bad temper because uh, I think they hate me because I'm very strict to every rules. And I wanted the, the finally I wanted to talk about the two stories about the museum stuffs. This one, the young guy is quite handsome. And he treats this job as a uh, work and never touched and uh, quite uh, uh, stubborn. And uh, we, every year we got a very special uh, program for the uh, orphanage. And uh, there were a uh, local oven will come to our museum and we invite them lunch and uh, have a uh, tour guide for them. And this, uh, uh, oh, sorry. This uh, uh, a young kid, uh, four years old. And uh, we, we, after that, uh, the, the postcards, we asked them to paint the postcard and to your, to what you, your lover or your family. And the, the four years uh, babe, uh, kids and come to him, say, uh, brother, uh, dear brother, can you tell me where's my mother's address? I want to send the postcard to, him, to her. And uh, he's shocked. He doesn't know how to answer. Is that ask your teacher? And after that, the kids write the postcard to him. He was moved. And after that, he, he, he thinks this job is uh, meaningful. It's not a uh, work anymore. So he started to think about the different uh, uh, responsibility for this museum. And this one is our cleaners. They are all Hui people and Muslim. So they don't allow to wear the white dress and makeup. And in the beginning, I asked them, everybody to a little makeup in the museum because it's a polite way to the older audiences. And uh, he, she, make up and wear the white uh, costume. And the, the elder of the village say, no, what's going on with you? Or wear that and the makeup. And the elders come to the museum to see what's going on with this strange building. And after that, all the elders agree. They don't understand what is the contemporary art. But after that, they all agree. The cleaners, they have a, a wonderful job in this museum. Uh, this is uh, finally, we do lots of drinks and, uh, for this museum. And I don't know how to build a, I don't know how to build a better museum in Asia, especially, especially in China, because I think the China is a, a experimental space, stage for all the people who gather dream there. And we just uh, do something 
sincerely uh, in the Northwest. And uh, I'm, I'm glad to have uh, this opportunity to work there and share my dream with the Yunchuan's people and share with you. Thank you so much. It's somehow, um, I think it's in the middle of the PowerPoint, right? We should go to the very first slide. Somehow it's hard to follow such a poetic presentation. Um, so thank you very much for having me here and to, um, uh, to have this chance to discuss with our very dear colleagues from Hong Kong as well as from um, the mainland and all of you here. Um, well, I want to give a very brief introduction about our museum and so as to kickstart the discussion. Um, for those who have uh, been to the museum, this is our museum. This is our museum. Um, we, we were established as part of a, a cultural complex. That's why you, you can see that we are pretty much uh, the same as the cultural center next to us. So the, uh, the museum was spawned in uh, back in 1962, so we are in fact celebrating our 55th anniversary this year. And we used to be um, in the uh, city hall, the top three floors. I'll be brief. Um, so we moved to Chim Sa Choi, our existing premises, uh, in 1991. Uh, but then uh, after over 20, uh, two decades, we are closed in 2015, August, for a major renovation. Um, as you can see, uh, we, the museum collections, we have a very diverse collection from uh, Chinese antiquities to very traditional Chinese painting to uh, trade painting and, uh, and uh, Hong Kong art. So we are very diverse. Uh, just to give you an impression of uh, the collection, we have Hong Kong art as a museum representing Hong Kong. We have works of um, local artists. Uh, from the very Western tradition as well as uh, more related to a Chinese uh, tradition. And then we have this China tray um, uh, collection, uh, which also represents the historical um, position of Hong Kong. And then we have Chinese painting calligraphy collect, uh, collection from the very uh, old uh, Chinese painting to very contemporary. These are some of the few uh, Asian cultural uh, Asian contemporary art that we have. And we have uh, Chinese antiquities, mainly donated by many of the Hong Kong collectors here in Hong Kong. So we can see that we have a very diverse collection and like M plus. Uh, and right now our museum is under transformation. Um, we are building one more floor on top of the museum. Uh, we are having our entrance um, lower to the ground level. We used to uh, go one floor up to go into the museum, and we are building uh, an annex building uh, to increase our exhibition areas. And at the back of the building, you can see that uh, we will have galleries that can uh, overlook the uh, harbor, and we'll have the a uh, new restaurant and cafe here facing the harbor as well. We're opening up the window to make us more transparent. So this is the old museum. And then this is supposed to be the new one. We, are, we will be uh, there uh, in two years. Uh, and this is looking at the museum from another angle. This is the new annex building and also the cafe and, and restaurant. Uh, our, what is more, we are also, apart from the indoor exhibition areas, we are going to extend our display outdoor so that we can better connect with the city. And with our transparency, uh, we can look at, uh, we can see the city and the city can see ourselves uh, after we reopen. So um, that's it about, very briefly, about our museum. So for this discussion and uh, also what we are doing right now, apart from the uh, transformation of the hardware, we are also rethinking about our positioning. And uh, I'm proposing uh, an idea here, which is a Lobo Museum. I've been talking about this in um, uh, many of the presentations I did. Uh, I tried to summarize the idea here. Uh, Lobo is a word that I tried to make up myself. It's uh, local and global combined. We used to have this uh, idea of being a global museum uh, and then there's the word local, 
uh, coming in about two decades ago, which means while being global, we also have to be local. So the term global. Uh, but the thing is, uh, with global, it's global first, local come after. Uh, and I would propose a reverse order. Now that many of the cities, including Hong Kong, uh, and many of the cities, Shenzhen uh, and uh, Beijing or Shanghai, in Asia, we are very global already. So maybe it's time to look at our local characteristics and also to uh, be more of ourselves uh, so that we, well, it's similar to maybe Dor what Dorian has said, that we are based in the place, but we look um, towards the world. So I would suggest uh, the concept of a logo museum, which is uh, basing in Hong Kong, well, for, for us, basing in Hong Kong, and then uh, looking towards the world. And with, if we, uh, well, for the museum, since we, we grow up here with Hong Kong in the 60s till now, so we are very much about the place. Uh, I think uh, many of the museums around the world, they are also similar. And I'd like to imagine the museum not just as a concrete building, but as something organic. So we are cultivated as a person from, uh, 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 by the place. So we have the character of the place. And being uh, in Hong Kong is, uh, to summarize it in, in just one slide, I would say we are living in parallel realities, which is very much the situation right now that we are living in between old and new uh, and very traditional to very contemporary. But as a Hong Kong person, we are very used to it. So I would say to be a well, when we rethink our repositioning, we think that as a museum representing Hong Kong, we must have this kind of Hong Kong personality, and that is living uh, with parallel realities while uh, seamlessly merging uh, all kinds of uh, cultural uh, characteristics or membership into one. Uh, when that applies into making use of our collection, we're thinking with our very diverse collection that used to be on display uh, separately in their own galleries. Uh, if we are looking at the museum as a, 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 an educational institution and exhibition as a, a method of knowledge making, then we are, well, like the idea of modernism, we are classifying uh, different knowledge into their own box. But then in future, can we think of something like cross-examining different genres of work and different works of different periods so that we can enhance a kind of comparative knowledge? I think that is very much needed in uh, the century that we are living in. Uh, I'm not good at diagram either. Uh, and I, I, I'm even worse than Dorian. I just picked up something readily available in, in the Microsoft uh, PowerPoint. Well, but I hope that, that gives you a sense of what I am talking about. Um, in the past, maybe we are looking at uh, uh, the time as uh, a linear uh, narrative, but with our very diverse collection, uh, when we put them into exhibition, instead of putting uh, each of the um, uh, artistic uh, period or style in, in, in one exhibition of its own right, can we look at the overlapping areas so as to do compare and contrast and make new sense of uh, what we have? Uh, uh, similarly, for geographical um, locations or, or collections, we can also uh, see the world as coexisting spaces uh, rather than separate uh, spheres. So I think um, in future, we may look more, we may put more em emphasis on the overlapping areas to see, um, uh, to give new perspective to our audience. And um, at the end of the day, uh, if all of us are going to develop our own museum from our own perspective uh, in relation to the place, just like what Intwine is doing. I'd like, I very much like the presentation of seeing the museum in different seasons because that really um, gives the sense of the museum as uh, uh, some uh, uh, growing, uh, an organic, uh, uh, organic uh, um, entity rather than, than uh, a hardware. And if we are going to build our own museum as uh, 
uh, uh, in the concept of cultivating a tree. In fact, um, to build better museums in Asia is like cultivating a whole forest. And each of us would be a different species of museum that we play our own part and also contribute our own uh, unique part um, to the world culture. So I think no one museum is better than the other, but um, then if we are to make the very best use of our own collection and our own characteristics and resources, I think we will all be very good uh, museums. So the museum will be back in 2019. Thank you. So thank you so much, Eve, um, but also to Su Chen and Ole. Um, I think, uh, you know, as if we had completely choreographed it, I think what the image that Eve showed at the end, I think it is such a nice encapsulation of what we have all presented. I think we have shown um, different species of museum model um, at different stage, a very old tree that's almost 55 years old, a very young sapling to a couple new that are in almost still in gestation, but you know, about to sprout. So I think that is really summarizes the reality of the larger landscape of museums in Asia, um, although it is kind of limited geographic range that we're talking about. But looking at the clock, it seems like maybe we only have 10, 15 minutes left. Um, makes us like we can just go on forever. But anyway, so so that everybody can go to um, your um, dinner and early drinks and whatnot. So unless there is any uh, burning questions by our co-panelists to one another, maybe we just open it up right away. Good? OK. Any questions from the floor? Uh, I would like to know what the policy is regarding uh, a, a donation of a collection. Are you allowed to sell the pieces which you find less interesting, or are you stuck with the whole thing? Are you asking me? Yes, because you are. Okay. Yes. Sure. Um, we're open to all um, kinds of donations that fit within our the purview purview in the sense that um, we are 20th and 21st century museum um, but more specifically we're in fact contemporary museum and our timeline starts really from the 1950s um, it should really fit into one of those four areas that I had talked about um, but you know we are not a museum that collects anything that may fall within that um, there is a certain aesthetic and historic standard of excellence that we would judge every single potential acquisition by. Um, the collection is a permanent collection. Um, it is governed by a policy. And then, as I quickly mentioned, there is an acquisition committee. So sometimes the board gets involved, depending on the value of each acquisition. Um, it is The collection is also uh, locked in a trust. Um, so deaccessioning, selling works that are already in the collection uh, will be exceedingly difficult. Here on the front row. Um, I, I thought very interesting that you introduced the concept of KPIs, key performance indicators. Um, how do you balance, I assume a lot of them have to do with the uh, volume of public that is going to be coming in, how you're running your finances, so number-based. How do you manage that with the intangible uh, objectives of a museum like M Plus in terms of its impact in the, in the community? Perhaps this is a question that I think uh, will apply to all our colleagues, because I don't know if you all call as key performance indicators, but I think even though we're not profit-making business, I think you know, we have our mission, we have to make our budgets, you know, we have to uh, spend our money judiciously. Um, and then you know, there are, there's expected success and results that we are expected to get. But to more specifically answer your question, that um, it is 
constant education and negotiation and conversation, even with our internal colleagues who are perhaps more in the, um, say, finance side. Then, um, of course, their job is to watch the numbers. Um, and the and then then there it's also their job to ask us about how much how much income are we going to get and then you know we take that seriously but we also say that yes exactly there are these intangible and immeasurable things um, that are ultimately the heart and core of what we do you know aesthetic excellence um, cultural transformation how can you measure those things so but insisting that these are the things that we really need to put there, even if we can't put numbers there, is what we do. So how about your other, um, are there expectations of numbers that you have to meet in your institution, in your job? Yes, of course. Uh, for all our government museums, we have 28 uh, KPIs. And uh, I think we, we have it uh, in the management report and it's made uh, public as well. Well, um, I think the difficulty in setting KPIs is that um, usually you, you, you quote very quantitative KPIs um, because that's more measurable, but it's hard to find very qualitative KPIs. Uh, and, but, but then for museum work, uh, it's always about quality more than quantity. But yes, um, short answer to your question, we need to achieve a certain um, level of attendance for exhibitions as well as for uh, education programs or other activities and all that, yeah, and publications, etc. cetera. Olin? Well, in our case, it's a bit um, uh, different uh, because um, three years ago, there was nothing. Uh, there was no building, there was no program, there was no staff, uh, there was no idea yet how exactly uh, uh, to which topic actually to dedicate this culture institution. So it was culture, but not yet decided it was about design. So um, let's say core decisions had to be made, uh, strategies had to be defined, that the question how to quantify that in terms of KPI belonging to work scopes of individual people that was uh, uh, something that uh, was not really the first thing to, to address. Once um, the basic decisions were made about um, uh, the name and the program, um, uh, certainly also the campaign and the way we would like to present ourselves to the, to, to the public, uh, public engagement in, in the end, um, it was very much about um, get the job done and, get, and, and open the door. Uh, so the ultimate um, measure of success is can we open the door? Uh, and can everybody uh, contribute to uh, that moment to, be hap to happen? And that moment, it will be very soon. So um, if you talk about KPIs, as far as I'm concerned, very often you immediately go to certain mechanisms to measure ongoing concerns, right? Going concerns. But um, when you start from scratch, um, it's, it's a bit different. It's, it's um, personally, I think it's more about uh, motivation that comes from elsewhere than you know, the measurement that is somewhere written uh, by uh, senior management that you meet your targets. It's not really about target, it's about ideal. And the ideal uh, need to be tested by the people outside, it cannot be measured by you know, internal uh, criteria. And so, so that's what I, I have to say to this. We also have that. The China Merchants has that. Everyone doing something for China Merchants, there is KPI. And of course, you try to get a grip on, on, on the output of work. But the output, that's what my point is, is not exactly the same as achievement. Output is great, but achievement is the real thing. And that cannot be measured. Right? You will measure that. These people will measure that, right? So they will measure whether it's successful, not the KPI. Oh my God, that's a secret, I think. <laughs> uh, actually, uh, I won't talk about that to my sponsor because that would be a tough uh, job for me. And I, uh, in summer vacation, I remember one day we got a 2,000 audience get into the museum. 
and I'm so happy. Even my uh, sponsor, they are so, so uh, curious about why there are so many people and keep on going to the museum. And in that uh, uh, winter picture, that day I remember very clearly, just four people get into the museum. And I, I say the winter, you know, no one will working outside in Intua. So I don't have that kind, kind of problem because everybody knows in winter and every audience will stay at home because outside is windy and snowing. So it's a very good reason for me to stay in Chuan again. <laughs> Great. Any other question uh, from the floor? Oh. Yes. Um, so hello, I'm Abby. And since this topic uh, is about how to build a better museum in Asia. However, I feel like this conversation was about concentrated on China. So how would you appeal to the audience, not just in a local and regional level, but then also to the other parts of Asia? Because I believe, you know, for example, the southeastern parts of Asia are quite interesting as well. How would you appeal to those audiences, or what are you doing right now that's doing so? Well, I mean, just very simply say that, uh, you know, I flash it through very quickly, but um, at M plus our uh, purview, first of all, in terms of our collection, is not just Hong Kong or China or even East Asia. Um, for us to think of Hong Kong as, because that is the fact, um, very strategically located at the juncture, between East Asia and South and Southeast Asia is very important. But it's not just the geographic location, but this is exactly where, um, you know, so almost like an overlapping areas between, say, uh, you know, these two civilizational zones. Um, so we have been looking more and more into increasing our collection from the much more diverse area. And then that will be reflected in our public programs as well. So that will be a simple answer to, uh, to your question. Any other answers from the panel? I think this question is extremely important because um, uh, it is, was already in the title. And uh, there is a reason that it is in the title. Uh, so I, I think for many people, it is an, it is an interesting trope to think about what the specificity is of to, to run a museum or to program a museum in this area of the world. Um, and um, I come from the Netherlands, so I'm not from this area, but uh, I, I live here now. And, and I, I have been thinking about this almost every day since I arrived here. Um, hopefully, uh, in a kind of similar way as many other people arrived in the city. Because if there's one specificity that I take seriously, uh, it's the it's the urban the urban dimension, the 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 rapid growth of cities uh, in this uh, part of the world, and um, the let's say the 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 mindset of newcomers coming to these cities, in need of ideas or in need of inspiration or in need of of models that they can um, tap into or learn from, and if um, we can. Uh, develop a role where we can provide the platform to find this kind of inspiration on for all these newcomers. Uh, I, I used to call it the arrival city. So it's, it's a city with so many new people. Um, uh, uh, I already mentioned in, in, in my short speech this to getting on their feet that a museum or a cultural institution or a platform can provide that kind of tool to, to find your way in society. Uh, you spoke about uh, ethical ethical um, inspiration or so there is a role beyond just the disciplinary issues right there is a role that is about insp inspiring society and I think that could be a fantastic role further to explore for our institution you know if I may just go back and uh, add a bit more um, you know, and no fault of the organizers for coming up with this, but you know we can spend a lot of time on, as I suggested earlier, on that title. 
And what do we mean by Asia, for instance? You know, there can be a whole week of conference about that topic, which does happen in many settings. Um, so you're totally right. You know, we here are two people working in Hong Kong just across the border um, in Shenzhen. And then Inchuan's pretty far, but it's just still part of China. So that certainly does not constitute anywhere near representative aspect of Asia. Um, you know, is Asia from Japan to Turkey or is it Asia from Japan to India? You know, I mean, like these, we can spend a lot of time talking about that. But I thought what really came through in the four presentations is that all of us are thinking about the relationship between where we, where we are and the much larger part of the world, whether it's actually global or it is the whole country or the region. But ultimately, it comes back to what is our first immediate audiences, you know, which is basically people who are living in your city. Um, so even though, you know, when I do our presentation, because this is an M plus is an institution that was from the beginning conceived as to be global, but we've always said that rooted in Hong Kong and that the whole inspiration came from the history of Hong Kong as a city that was formed by constant exchanges um, and movement, colonialism being part of that. Um, but ultimately it really kind of comes down to via KPI or whatever, you know, who's our audience and what are we doing in terms of outreaching to our community? Any other question from the floor? There's one. Hi, I actually have a question for Su Chen. So um, I was wondering, so say for like Shanghai and Hong Kong and you know the big cities in um, in Asia, you already had this ecological system ongoing. So when you open a museum, it's relatively easier to attract people just walk in. But so for places like in China, like nobody, like people hardly. I mean, I don't know much about the city, but it seems that people hardly know much about contemporary art. And how do you attract people in face of this gargantuan architecture? Like, how can you make them not feel intimidated? And how can how do you attract them to how do you make the museum approachable in general? Yeah, that's my question. Thanks. Uh, actually, uh, when I moved the uh, move into the city. I don't know. I just uh, uh, took around and uh, uh, talking with the local people every day, every time, and uh, use a fresh heart to to see everything. And uh, then I think the how can I hi, invite the students to get into the museum? The first step, and the second, the family. So they were two unions for for me to try to catch them, get into the museum and uh, cooperate with the local media, they are easy to catch up because uh, just pay and use WeChat. So that one is very easy. And I, uh, I spend uh, more than 50% of, uh, of uh, uh, advertisement, I mean, pay international one, more than local one, because I know local people, they are, how can I say? Uh, the local people, they treat museum as a very high class basis. So every time they just want to see what's going on inside. So little by little, they will become a strategy for me. I know how to uh, treat the local media and to cooperate with them and even the local government. So I got lots of help from the different uh, organization. But uh, I think the most interesting and got a high reputation of this museum, it's a uh, uh, cooperate with a local family, especially there are so many uh, museums from Shenzhen or the other uh, cities that came to our museum to see our public education program. So I think there will be a 
uh, also a very experimental way for me to try because uh, I never do that in Beijing because I don't need. Because uh, more than 100 thousand artists waiting there to get into the museum. So nearly I don't do anything in Beijing. But in, in China, I would think about that every day to how to cheer people to get into the museum. They were, uh, even from the kindergarten, I never give up. I asked my staff to visit all the kindergarten, uh, primary school, every unit, and never give up, even now, even today. Thank you, Sichuan. Very inspiring to hear that. Mm. OK, final question? No? Good, then I think we wrap it up here. Thank you um, to the panel members, and thank you to the audience. And thank you, AGA, again.